and particle physics. So I made a few notes just to help if you want to do the question yourself, but part A of this question requires you to know about beta plus decay. So beta minus decay is what you actually have to memorize in every specification in physics. It's where a neutron turns into a proton, emitting an electron and an antineutrino in the process. Now beta plus decay is the complete opposite. So what happens is a proton, so let me just write here beta plus, turns into a neutron, emitting a the antiparticle of an electron, which is a positron, and a neutrino, not an antineutrino. So what we write here is, well, we can see that the positron or, um, is already being emitted here. We now say that a proton goes into the interaction, turns into a neutron, and along with the positron that's emitted, there's a neutrino that's emitted. And the reason for that, by the way, is that electron number can be conserved because this has electron number of minus one, this has electron number of plus one, so add up to zero, which is the same as the electron number on the left-hand side of the interaction. It asks, what's the exchange particle used by the electromotive force? That's essentially the same as the electromagnetic force, and it's a photon, or a virtual photon. State two differences between the exchange particles used by the weak interaction, which I've labeled as W minus or plus boson, and the electromagnetic force. So you might already be able to see one. The fact that these can be charged, whereas this is uncharged. So I'm just going to get a text box out to write in neater. But what we can say is that photons are uncharged, whereas W bosons are charged particles. That'd be one. Um, just thinking of another one. You can also say that photons, they don't have any mass, whereas W bosons, they do have mass. So photons are massless, whereas W bosons are, sorry, have mass. Great. Moving on to part C, it's asking, state what's meant by an antiparticle. So again, I'm just going to bring a text box out and give you a model definition for that. So a particle and its corresponding antiparticle, they have the same rest mass or same rest energy. Either one of those is fine to mention, but they're oppositely charged. To give you an example, a proton and an antiproton, they have the same rest mass, same rest energy, but a proton is positively charged, whereas an antiproton will be negatively charged. And let's fill in this table to the rest of the antiparticles. And this is a bit of a trick question in my opinion. So um, this is a negatively charged electron. The antiparticle will be a positively charged positron. Now the pi naught meson, it's going to be a pi particle for the antiparticle, but there's no such thing as an antipion. If you had a pi plus meson, the antiparticle would be a pi minus meson. And if you had a pi minus meson, the antiparticle would be a pi plus meson. They're oppositely charged. But the opposite of a neutral charge is just that neutral charge. So it's actually itself. The same applies with a K meson. It's a K naught meson. So actually, these two, and the last one actually, a photon, the antiparticle of a photon is a photon. These three are examples where the antiparticle of the particle is just itself because that satisfies the definition that they have the same rest energy or same rest mass and they're oppositely charged. The opposite of a neutral charge is zero. A photon is also uncharged, so the opposite charge of that is also zero. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, please like the video, comment, subscribe, and if you have anything specific you want me to go through, just let me know in the comments. Um, I've linked my email in the description if you're interested in any tutoring inquiries, just send me an email. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Bye.